Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church at Worship. Today is June 21st and it is the third Sunday after Pentecost. It is also Father's Day, so a happy Father's Day to all of you to whom it applies. And since all of us had fathers and we have our Heavenly Father, happy Father's Day to all of us. We begin service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change and open to us a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding and loving kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel comes from the 10th chapter of St. Matthew. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake, will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The fourth and fifth grader stood before us, Signed permission slips in hand. It was the first day of football sign-ups. There we were, five coaches, anticipating what the season would bring. A couple of the boys stood near as tall as the shortest coach, and another weighed almost as much. But most were just average-sized fourth and fifth graders, with a few 
little boys tossed in the mix. They were nervous and excited. They had seen football on TV, seen the action and the fun on the screen, but not the work that had gone into getting those players to where they were. A few of them had played football before, but most had not. We sized them up and down, trying not to allow our facial expressions to give away what we were thinking, which was basically how long each kid was going to hang in there before he washed out. Taking the papers, we told everyone, take it in. And then the work began, the whole drill. All right, boys, this is not going to be easy. Practice is not going to be fun. It is going to be hard work. You will hurt. Sometimes you will bleed and worse. You will practice in the heat. You will lift weights. You will sweat and you will ache. You will run until you feel like your legs are going to fall off and then you will run some more. Everyone is part of the team. This team. We will function as a team. When one of you works hard, all work hard. And when one gets lazy, all will pay. Got it? Got it, they shouted. <laughs> the next day, we had just a few less boys show up. Then pads and helmets were handed out and they started to run back and forth, up and down the field, 10 yard line and back, 20 yard line and back, 30 yard line and back, 40 and 50. <laughs> they were dragging. Go get some water and take a knee. All right. How many of you ready to quit? <laughs> Nobody raised their hand. But the next day, there were fewer boys who came out for practice. Football is a tough physical sport and it takes dedication, hard work, overcoming emotional, mental, as well as physical obstacles. It means giving yourself to the game, oftentimes leaving your ego on the sidelines. You will be yelled at by coaches, by fans, by parents, both yours and others. But if you have a heart for football, you will give it your life. When I was in seminary, I had an opportunity to take a class at Virginia Theological Seminary in Alexandria. It was not far from where I grew up. <laughs> and I always liked to go to the bookstore to see what goodies I could pick up to reflect my time in this new place. And you know how much I love stuff. Well, on one occasion, I, I happened upon a poster that it just stopped me in my tracks. It looked like a, a medieval painting of early Christians pierced with arrows and with swords and stones strewn about. The bodies were bleeding and, and strangely contorted. It was, it was unnerving, but I kept staring at it. Finally, I read the caption at the bottom. It read, if you think it's hard being a Christian Today, dot, dot, dot. The connection was not lost on me. Early Christians were truly persecuted for their faith. John the Baptist had been imprisoned and then beheaded. Following Jesus' crucifixion, the disciples hid in the upper room, afraid that what had befallen Jesus could just as easily happen to them. Stephen was stoned to death after the witness before the Sanhedrin. 
And Herod Agrippa killed James, the brother of John, which led to the departure of the rest of the twelve from Jerusalem. You see, statewide persecutions of Christians were held under Nero about A.D. 64. And although persecution were sporadic and local, from that point forward, Christians could be arrested and killed just for proclaiming the name of Jesus. And many of them were. But the truth was, I didn't think it was hard being a Christian. I was proudly studying to be a pastor, someone who pro would proclaim God's love. I wore my white tab collar as a badge of honor. People would look up to me, would regard me with honor and respect because of the office of the pastor. My job would be to help people experience God's grace. After my ordination, I was called upon to preach God's word, both law and gospel, called to speak truth in love. But sometimes, we don't want to hear the truth. We just want to feel the love. We want to be affirmed right where we are. Most of the time, we're quite comfortable, and we don't want to be challenged. Challenge equals change, and we don't like change. As the old joke goes, how many Lutherans does it take to change a light bulb? None. We'd rather sit in the dark and remember how good the old bulb was. The change is inevitable. And our faith, our relationship with Jesus calls us to change. Last week I shared that the first thing we do in worship is confession, a call to change the way that we have been in the world in order to experience the radical life-giving grace and forgiveness of God. In baptism, we are called to live into the community, which is the church, to be the voice of the one who calls us into a deeper relationship with God and with one another. We are called to be as Christ to those in need. As we learn from the parable of the Good Samaritan, who are my neighbors? Neighbors are those who show mercy. And we are called to go and do likewise. And sometimes it's easy to talk about being neighborly. And we encourage it. We show up within our own congregation. We send food and money to Christian ministries of Lincoln County. We support Hesed House, our homeless shelter. We make and send over 300, 300 quilts a year throughout the world for Lutheran World Relief. We send money through Lutheran Disaster Relief to areas hit by natural disasters. And through Lutheran World Hunger Appeal, for those who hunger and thirst throughout the world. Closer to home, we prepare bereavement meals and take food to the sick, and all of these are wonderful and necessary and significant ministries. But there is another aspect of our calling that will often challenge us and make us uncomfortable and create an element of fear. We are called to be prophetic witnesses of God's righteousness, justice, and mercy. 
We are sometimes called to stand in opposition to the powers that be, just as Jesus did. We are called to take a bold and sometimes unpopular stance that righteousness might be revealed. We are called to truly be disciples, followers of Jesus, trusting our very lives, committing our very lives to the purposes of God. And I think that's what our gospel lesson addresses today. As disciples, we are to be like our teacher, living out the same thing that Jesus lived here on earth. And Jesus encouraged his followers in this way, not once, but three times. Do not be afraid. It was as if Jesus was saying, my presence in this world is dangerous and so will yours be as you follow me we know that Jesus challenged the status quo that was an oppressive force to the Jews and he also challenged the Jews who were blinded by the law and couldn't see the light of the gospel that stood full-faced in front of them. Jesus said, Don't think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. <laughs> Are you uncomfortable yet? This certainly doesn't fit the nice image that we like to think of the image of Jesus, our safe Jesus. This picture of an untamed Jesus speaks the truth of the situations in which those who are his disciples, have and will experience. When we stand with Jesus, we dare to risk everything. In light of all that has transpired in the last several months, there are many things that we, as children of God, are called to speak. While we are all tired of sheltering in place, wearing face masks, and social distancing, washing and sanitizing our hands, there is still a raging virus that doesn't care one iota about our politics. So I dare ask, who is my neighbor? The one who shows mercy. The murder of George Floyd set off waves of protesting demanding that black lives matter as much as everyone else's do. Not more, not less. So I dare ask, Who is my neighbor? The one who shows mercy. As Christians, as true disciples of Jesus, when you look around your neighborhood, 
our city, our state, our nation, and across all of God's creation. Where do you see injustice? Then dare to ask yourself, to whom can I be a neighbor? To whom shall I show mercy? How can I speak a prophetic word for the sake of Christ in this troubled world? No, it might not be comfortable. And it may cause us to fear. But the good news is that the one who claimed us in baptism, named us in the waters of grace, fed and nourished us at the table of salvation, already holds us close to the very heart of God. Amen.
we join together professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Bless all fathers 
and father figures who strive to love and to nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we all walk with them in the newness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O oh God, those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Oh, yeah. 
And now, may the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ Jesus our Lord, strengthen, restore, support, and bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Be well. Stay safe. God bless.